Hi everyone, it's Jill Castle from The Nourished Child. I'm a registered dietitian specializing in childhood nutrition and I run this page and The Nourished Child Facebook page is also an extension of my blog and my podcast by the same name. So, hello, hello, glad to see you. Of course, it's Monday. It seems to be the best day for me to do something like this. Today is a cloudy, rainy day. I've already had a few clients in and I have a little bit of space to come live and talk to you. So, today I am talking about the importance of structure in feeding kids. So I'm a huge proponent of structure. It is one of the first things I set up with all of my clients. Um, many, many moms and dads already have a structure working well for their families, but I would say just as many don't have a good structure working for their families. And so that's one of the first things that I like to set up with my uh, clients. And if you follow me on the blog, you know I, I talk quite a bit about all of these components, but I'm, I'm going to review them today for you live. So I've always had uh, quite a structured approach to raising my own children. I have four, and while they are young adults and teenagers now, there was a time when there were four of them under the age of five years old. So I definitely had a structure and a system for feeding them especially, but we had a structure to our whole day. We had a structure around, or a routine or a rhythm around taking baths, around puzzle time, around going for walks. Um, we, had, we had like a whole system set up for our day and that included obviously meals and snacks as well because when you have young children those are a, a big component of the day for them. So I remember we would have breakfast in the morning and I would clean up while they played in the playroom and then we would do all our act outdoor activities and our errands so usually I combined those two things. We would go run errands like the grocery store and then hit the park on the way home and get home in time for lunch and then naps and up after nap time was snack time and then we did some indoor activities they might have you know we did a lot of puzzles at the kitchen counter and while I would do whatever I could do to start getting meals ready for dinner and then the evening uh, schedule would progress so even if you don't think you have structure built into your day yet, you probably do. But when it comes to feeding your kids, it's just as important to have a rhythm and a routine set up for their day. So we know that kids have three meals each day. Uh, young children may have three snacks per day. Older kids in school may be just having two snacks per day and teenagers may be having one snack per day, although growing teens are kind of all over the map sometimes, having many more than just one. But I digress, we won't talk about that today. But anyways, why is it important? I have three main reasons why structure is important with feeding your child or feeding any kids. Number one, it does set up that rhythm and that routine to the day, which can really help you be efficient with meal time and snack time. It can help you be efficient with other things that you have to get done during the day. And it builds in this security for your child or this predictability for your child about when meals and snacks are going to happen. And there is a lot to be said for having that predictability in your schedule so that your child feels secure and isn't necessarily questioning you all the time about when meals and snacks are happening or isn't feeling insecure about when they're going to be able to get their next meal or snack. So if you have a routine or a structure, meaning you have regular times that meals and snacks occur, your child will most likely feel more secure and have um, a great sort of uh, 
relaxation and calmness about when meals and snacks are happening. So that's number one. And in addition to having that rhythm and routine built up and that framework around meals and snacks, having a structure really also helps you make sure all the nutrients that your children need um, are planned into that day. So you can really look at the, the meals and the snacks and you can get a good handle on whether you're covering all the, all the things that your child needs to be eating during the day in terms of food groups and nutrients and, and that nice balance that we all want to be striking when we're planning out meals and snacks. So the second reason that structure is really important uh, in feeding children is that structure helps support the boundaries that you've set up for the day. So if you have this structure in place and you have boundaries around meals and snacks. Uh, for example, you might close the kitchen, which is one of my favorite things to do and to teach, but you might close the kitchen between meal time and snack time. So after lunch is over, you might not have the kitchen open until snack time in the afternoon. So you basically are allowing um, allowing the structure to support the boundaries that you have in place. So, for example, um, if you don't have a structure in place and you don't enforce those boundaries, you might have a child who's in the pantry all day long, every hour on the hour, looking for food to eat. But if you have a structure and a rhythm and a routine, you are uh, much have a much easier time saying no to your child in a nice way. And that, that really can just involve saying, you know, sweetie, I'm sorry, we just had lunch, it's not time for snack yet, we'll have snack at three o'clock. And you can point out the clock and teach your child what it looks like for it to be three o'clock. So um, you actually can uphold that structure using uh, the boundaries that you have in place. The third and really important aspect of having uh, structure in your child's uh, day around meals and eating is that it helps them regulate their appetite. And this is really important. I think we lose sight of this a little bit because there's a whole hormonal complex that happens around appetite in our children. And you know we have the hormones ghrelin and we have the hormone leptin that help both of those. One signals hunger, one signals fullness. And those happen in relation to when your child last ate. And oftentimes, if we're feeding our kids every hour on the hour, they don't get that chance to build up that hormonal cascade that tells them it's time to eat three hours later. So having a structure built into your day with meals and snacks really helps create that space between a meal and a snack so that your child can build up their appetite. So, and then the other part of appetite regulation is teaching your child about their appetite and helping them learn how to be more mindful about their eating. And so when you have a child who's hungry and it's time for snack, you can make the connection between, ah, oh, your body is telling you it's time to feed it. And oh, by the way, it's three o'clock and we're going to sit down now and have our snack. And so you can connect everything together, which is really powerful when you're teaching your child about their own body, their own appetite signals, and you're helping your child be more mindful with eating. So those are my three tips for um, building structure, or really they're tips, but they're also the why behind why uh, structure is so important in feeding children. So number one, it creates that rhythm and routine in your day. Number two, it supports the boundaries that you have in place around eating and even food choice uh, in your home. And then three, it helps your child regulate his or her appetite and even helps you teach your child about being mindful with eating. So I have more uh, information on this topic for you on the blog. You can go to www.jillcastle.com.
facebook.com forward slash blog. I will include in the link, I have a, a post on how to create structure and balanced meals, uh, which I think you'll really like and it relates very well to this. And I also have another post on why structure is so important for children. I'll post those two links in the comments. I also have a podcast episode out called How to Raise a Mindful Eater, where I interviewed my co-author of Fearless Feeding, Mary Ann Jacobson. And she really digs into her new book, How to Raise a Mindful Eater, in the podcast and gives some really great um, rationale and why it's so important to do that and how you can do it. And she talks a lot about structured eating as well. So I will include that link in the comments below uh, for you to look at whenever you'd like. Thanks for joining me on this rainy, gloomy Monday in New England. I hope this was helpful to you. And as always, if you have any questions you want me to talk about, um, let me know. I'm happy to talk about them, podcast about them, or even write about them. So I'd love to hear your feedback. As always, I hope you and yours are, are well and are as healthy as you can be. Thanks for joining me today and take care. Bye.